Hello YouTube, it's Austin and welcome to my channel where normally I talk about affiliate marketing, passive income, and making money online. Now the only caveat to that is on Sundays where I provide a little bit of motivation. This video will, this video is intended to motivate both me and you and if you don't feel like uh, someone over the internet or over YouTube should be motivating you, feel free to jump on to the next video. As I mentioned, I have a ton of videos on affiliate marketing, passive income, and making money online. Be sure though, before before you go to like subscribe and ring the bell so that you can receive tips and tricks in affiliate marketing anyway in this video I'm actually going to talk a little bit about myself and and what provides motivation for me to keep going um, so uh, a little bit of background about my story about who I am uh, I was raised in Kenosha Wisconsin if you've watched any of my other videos I talk about Kenosha a lot in fact I have a blog about Kenosha um, anyway um, one thing that has always been my thing is putting in hard work. Even from a little kid, one of my favorite things to do was to cut grass for my, my grandpa and he would pay me $15 per lawn and this is back in the 90s, so like early 90s, let's see, um, I would say probably 93, 94. 95. In the summers I would go cut grass for my grandpa, he would pay me $15 per lawn and I would take that money and I'd go buy video games, either Nintendo 64, Super Nintendo. Uh, I would go over to Kmart and buy those games. Um, it, it was just an addiction for me to, to get the newest game. But again, my thing, um, one thing about me is I've always been into hard work. I started cutting grass for my grandpa when I was eight, eight or nine years old uh, for $15 per lawn every two weeks. So $45 every two weeks for a nine-year-old boy. Pretty intense. Anyway, so if we fast forward that a little bit, I got my first real job when I was 14. I worked at Burger King when I was 14, but the thing is, is I've, I've always looked older, and they had certain rules back then, I don't know if they still do, about the age that you could start handling food, and I wasn't quite that age. Um, so because I looked older, I was always working and handling food. Um, I can actually remember one story where, or one, one, one instance where, um, they were going to make me work some night and I knew the rule because I was under the age of 14 I had to be home or whatever um, so I actually I walked out of that job I was like no this isn't gonna happen I walked from uh, 75th Street in Kenosha all the way down to um, about the corner of to, to there's an old Walmart to the old Walmart where I, I was calling my mom and my parents on the way um, to come pick me up. This is before cell phones, so you had to walk from like payphone to payphone to come pick them up. Apparently we had crossed paths. I wound up walking like five miles home just to prove a point to my old employer that um, I wasn't gonna work and I, I didn't have to work, um, uh, these rules. Anyway, continuing on, so um, I wound up working at Kmart when I was 16. I've talked about that in some of my other videos. Uh, that was an experience with customer service and dealing with angry customers, but again, Basically, from the very beginning, I've always been willing and able to work. So if we if we spin this out a little bit forward, I don't want to tell you year by year, um, but I, I've worked I've I've worked at White Castle. I worked third shift at White Castle. That's an experience, especially in the summer. One cool story is I met Doc Rivers. He came through the drive-through, driving a Lincoln Town Car. He sounded familiar. I got his autograph. That that's neither here nor there. But that's a funny story because I couldn't remember his his name at that time. But I met Doc Doc Rivers at a uh, White Castle parking lot or White Castle drive through at like 11 or maybe like 3 in the morning it was it was early it was weird anyway so we if we fast forward to fast forward my first real job was working as basically like a secretary for a for-profit university called DeVry nine, nine months after working at DeVry actually let me back up a little bit once I, gra I graduated from college in 2006 with a bachelor's degree in communications. My first job out of college was actually at a call center. Worked at a call center for a little while. Then I quit and moved back home. I wound up working third shift at Walmart just so that I could have money to, to do stuff. Um, the reason why I bring these things up is because you have to be willing to do the, the very small, low level grunt work before you can move up in life, before you can before you can master that next task, you have to be able and willing to do the lower things. For example, like I said, when I worked at when I worked third shift 
at Walmart, it was basically just putting boxes on shelves, boxes on shelves. You would meet in, at 10, I think, at night, and you'd get your assignment, and you'd go, and you'd just put boxes on shelves. That's that's what I thought for the entire eight-hour shift. Um, I remember a guy coming up to me, a manager coming up to me and saying, man, you are working really hard. You know, you're working much harder than everyone else, man. You're doing such a good job. And I literally told him, I said, I'm just putting boxes on shelves. How hard could this be? But the thing is, is regardless of how easy it was, people weren't able to just execute that. There was already a blueprint. There was already a plan that was out there and people weren't able to execute just the lowest of tasks. I showed up every day, no matter how much I hated it. I did exactly what was asked. Hey, can you put these boxes on the shelves? Yeah, I, you know, I, I did what was required because that was the job that I had at the time. Before you can get to that top level, before you can get to the pinnacle, you have to be ready and willing and able to do the things that are at the bottom because those, those little tasks actually build up to the bigger tasks. Those little things that you learn how to do at the ground will help you understand at the top. It'll help you, it'll make you better at being at the top. Um, as I keep going, my first quote unquote real job was being a secretary, it was an operation support coordinator for a school called DeVry University. I did that for exactly nine months and then I got promoted to being an admissions advisor. And so a, a couple things about DeVry is it's a very fast paced for profit school. Uh, at the time, I don't know how it is now. Uh, at the time when I worked there, it was, hey, you need to make your numbers or you're not going to be around very long. And so I understood that and I had to do, and I did what was required of me at that time to be successful so that I could move up. Uh, I wasn't the best salesperson. I wasn't the best recruiter. I wasn't the best at, at admissions, but I showed up every day. I think I was late maybe once because of an alarm clock. Anyway, um, I showed up every day. I did exactly what was asked for me. They asked, they said, hey, make 100 phone calls. I made 100 phone calls uh, just so that I could show them that I was doing exactly what was asked for me. And that's a that's a large part of, of, of a business is just showing up every day and doing what is asked of you. And because I, I did that at the lower levels, I was able to eventually get promoted to higher levels. So I was at, I was at DeVry for, I want to say five years maybe four years. It, it felt like a long time. And so DeVry actually went through a number of changes at that time where um, the for-profit education system was going through a lot of changes in regulation. And so I saw the writing on the wall, you know, the, the way that the, the model of uh, compensating their admissions people was going to change. And because of that change, they weren't going to need as many admissions people. So I started looking around. Also, I kind of got an idea that um, there was really no opportunity for advancement. And so actually what I did was I, I took a step backwards and I went to a private institution uh, called Concordia University, Wisconsin. I worked at Concordia for, I believe, five years. And in that time, I was the admissions and then I also got promoted to uh, center director. So I was the manager of a satellite location, which was pretty cool. And so the reason, again, that I bring up all of these things is, is because... I started off at the very low of the low, um, it, working in working in fast food restaurants, you know, smelling like fried food and and, and greasy hamburgers. Um, I worked my way up and out of that. I started off as a, as a secretary and he eventually moved up uh, in a short order and eventually wound up becoming a director, a, like a manager. Of, of a satellite location. And one of the cool things about being that manager was I basically ran a small business. I had a budget, I had um, a certain number of students that I had to attain, I had to understand um, working with vendors and working with um, teachers or, or instructors who you know thought they were they thought they were the ones, they thought they were the gifts. And so there was a lot of relationship building and massaging egos. And one of the coolest things that came out of working at Concordia or CUW was um, I got to build relationships with people of all ages and groups and situations. For example, in my office, I had a person, I had a, a, a secretary who was about to retire. She 
had worked for the Concordia. She'd worked, she'd worked, I think, 30, 40, 50 years. And so she was always thinking about retirement. She was always thinking about, you know, the next economic downturns. You know, her mind was in a much different place than where mine was. You know, I'm, I'm career oriented. You know, I, I want to put in hours and, and move up the, the economic ladder, uh, the, the, the corporate ladder. And then I worked with another person who her kids were either just leaving college or, or you know, one had just graduated and she's moving around and, and all of all this other stuff. But it taught me how to build relationships and how to understand people of various backgrounds, which is really cool. And it, it helps me uh, connect with different people because at, at its foundation, everybody is the same. Everyone wants to make sure that they they have a, a strong relationship with um, a strong connection with someone else. They want to make sure that they have security with regard to my money and, and finances and all that stuff. So, you know, health, wealth, relationships. At its core, everybody is the exact same. The method of getting to that person may differ, but in, in general, everything was the exact same or everybody's the exact same. And the reason why I bring this up and, and this, this example comes to my mind, uh, one Christmas, what I did was I, I bought everyone a book. It was called Get Rich Carefully by Jim Cramer. He works for MSNBC and, you know, he has Squawk Box and all this other stuff. But the reason why I bought the book is because we all had something in common. We all had an interest in stocks, even though uh, our, our stock market acumen was different, our, our planning was different, our goals were different, we all had this common interest in stocks. And so every week we would talk about stocks just for an hour. We, during work time, you know, we would, we would stop working and, and we would just have this conversation about, you know, different ideas, different things, why we think things are going the way it's going. And so, you know, that was a way to connect with people on a much personal level. And that's something that should be done if you're working in the corporate world, because in reality, people are more than just employees. They're, they're, you know, they may work at a location from nine to five, but at the end of the day, they have so many other things that they're worried about, so many other responsibilities. So it's important to understand if you're working in a corporate world, if you're doing um, entrepreneurship, that people are not just cogs in a corporate wheel. Um, you will connect with them on a very foundational level if you can find a way to relate to them. And that's something that's just surface level, like, hey, how was your weekend? Actually having a vested interest or a common interest in something, and in our case, it was stocks. And so we were able to just have a free flowing conversation and we were able to connect and we have these, had these deep connections because we had this interest in stocks. And, and that was the one thing that was common between all of us. But the reason why I'm rambling and talking about this is because every business or every time you work someplace, it should teach you something. As I mentioned, working at DeVry taught me sales. You know, it taught me that um, there are there's a formula, formulaic approach to executing a sale, doing things, getting things like interest, desire, motivation, uh, finding out their interests, linking features and benefits. Getting, setting up trial closes throughout the conversation are all ways to help close the sale or make, make it a little bit easier. When I, worked, uh, when I worked as a manager, again, building relationships, connecting with people on more than just a surface level. Again, these are all things that will help you in your business, regardless of the business type that you offer, if it's on-site or online, uh, offline or online, it can help you. If you are doing YouTube videos, you still need to find a way to connect with someone on the other side of the screen. And doing that, uh, one of the good ways of doing that is sharing a little bit of yourself because, again, we all have the same basic needs. We all want to make sure that we are secure. We want to make sure that we have strong relationships with our families and friends, and we all want to be healthy at some point. And if you can find a way to connect with your audience in one of those ways, you will find success uh, and you'll find long-term sustained success. Working at um, working at, at at Walmart taught me that um, you know just showing up and putting a little bit of effort will put you above 90% of the people. And I've talked about this in other videos. If you just show up on time consistently and you put forth effort, you are going to be better than 90%. And that can that applies to everything. YouTube videos, blog posts, whatever it is that, that you are doing online or even uh, offline, you show up 
you're consistent, you're on time, you will, you will be praised for doing uh, such great work. And to get to that next level, obviously you'll have to put in a little bit of overtime, a little bit of overdrive, but show up, be consistent, put in, a, put in some work. So uh, that's what Walmart taught me. Um, <laughs> uh, Kmart, Kmart, Burger King, and we'll even say, um, we'll just say K Kmart and Burger King, uh, they, they taught me, or in, in White Castle, they taught me the, the value of uh, customer service. It's funny, uh, there are three completely different situations, but uh, these things will teach you customer service at different levels. Um, it'll teach you customer service with regard to a employee-employer relationship. Um, I've had people who tried to fight me at, at White Castle, which was interesting. Um, I, I've had people that were just upset at the world and, and you know, they came across me at that point in time. They felt like they needed to let me know. Um, anyway, just to, to the, this, this video is running on a, a little bit long, but I, I wanted to, to make sure that I came in and I tell you for your motivation, regardless of where you are, if you're happy with your job, if you're unhappy with your job, make sure that you are taking something away from it, something that you can apply to other jobs or other situations. So if you're looking to grow your business online, take away whatever it is that you're currently doing today and apply it to your online. If it's building relationship, if it's building trust, showing up every day, showing up on time and putting in consistent effort, regardless of what it is, make sure that you are taking that from your your offline job and applying it to your online job. So uh, make sure that you like, subscribe, ring the bell of this video or any other video on this channel has helped you out in any way. Also, before I let you go, I'm gonna let you know there are a few affiliate links in the description. There will be one link to learn a little bit more about affiliate marketing. I know that I talk a lot about affiliate marketing on this site, but if you want to go more in depth, uh, take a look at that webinar. The webinar is free. The second link in the description will be to a course on blogging. If you wanna learn a little bit more about blogging, if you wanna use blogging as your platform, I urge you to check out this course. This course is called Project 24. And the 24 in the Project 24 means you can replace your full-time income with passive income within 24 months. Now the thing with all businesses is that no business is guaranteed and it is a business venture, but definitely take a look at this course because it has, um, it has tremendous opportunity. If you follow their steps, and there's just 60 of them, if you follow their steps, you can find the success that you've been looking for. Another link in the description will be to my email list. You wanna make sure that you join my email list because I am creating new videos every single day. And on Sundays, I send out an email to everyone on my list and let them know what's coming up for the week. So you wanna make sure that you get on that list so you can plan accordingly for my emails as they're released. Um, and the final link in the description will be to ClickFunnels. Now, if you know anything about me and you know anything about this channel, I recommend starting an email list for email marketing as soon as possible. The reason for that is email actually converts, email actually converts at a much higher level than any other type of marketing. So if you can start building the email list, and that's one of the things that I failed with, but if you can start building your email list, you will find success faster. Um, I'll leave a link in the description to ClickFunnels. It's what I personally use for building my email list. And so there will actually be a two week free trial in the description. Check it out after two weeks. Uh, I do the, the price does go up. Uh, if you do continue on with ClickFunnels or any of the other links, um, they are affiliate links so I can and do receive some commission if you continue on. So once again, this is Alston. Thanks for watching and we will see you soon.